Welcome back, everybody, to the final part of this Star Wars The Republic 2 Battlefront 2 tutorial series. And in this one, we're kind of finishing up the mod. We've done most of everything we need to do. I'm just going to show you a few things that, like, I didn't need to do specifically for this mod, uh, or a few things that just kind of didn't fit in any other section. Um, first off, though, I forgot to mention uh, star cards in the last episode uh, for UI tweaks and, and whatnot. So basically what I do for star cards is I take in-game screenshots, uh, for the character, and then just kind of go into the into Frosty. You need to find the star card file itself. So, for example, this is Lana Benico's project file. You search for Dooku. Dooku's star cards are in uh, this folder here, the Season 6, because he was added in a DLC. Not there. Bitmaps, front end cards. There we go. I basically just take in game screenshots. I have NVIDIA's Ansel. Uh, you could also use like Open Game Camera which I will link in the description if you need it. Um, but yeah, then you just take in game screenshots, you clip it in Photoshop. So for example, I just take like a screenshot, I open a star card image, uh, and then I just kind of take it, move it over, and then adjust the scale, and then clip it, and then save it. That's pretty much all I do uh, for star card images. It's pretty simple. Uh, the next thing I need to talk about is cloth importing, and that is because well, we didn't have to do cloth importing for this character, but assuming that your character might have a cape, like Lana Benico has a cape right here. So basically, to do the cape, it's pretty simple. Uh, we need to set up a new frost meshy thing. First of all, let me open up my Lana project. So to set up a frost meshy folder, you need to open your dot your res slash chunk explorer. You need to search for the character. In this case, it's Dooku. We're going to be replacing his cape. So we can open this up. All right, so we need to export the cape mesh file, the cape cloth wrapping asset, this cape EA cloth, and then the blocks file for the cape as well. And you put all of this into the samples folder under a different folder than your uh, other mesh. And once you've done that in your frost meshy project, you should see this here, and it should have this little cloth icon. Um, this is here in case say you're importing a cape over like a skirt or something in which case if you're importing like a cape over a skirt what you need to do um well let's let's say for example we're importing a skirt over a cape so we've just exported the cape and we need to put a skirt over it so basically what we do is we'd find another character's uh skirt like leia for example leia's a princess skirt and then we'd export this uh, uh skirt information into a different folder what we do in this scenario uh, with this cloth thing is now you can click this and uh, tell it to use basically the physics of a skirt instead of the cape and then we can import over the cape as well. But we're importing a cape over a cape so it doesn't really matter. Freaking it is pretty simple. All you have to do uh, in this instance is to rig it. You just yeah, click this, parent it with empty groups to the skeleton, and then you just rig it by clicking this, clicking this, Oh, clicking your normal mesh, then the cape. Oh boy. Then going into... I cannot do this with life of me. Weight paint. Transfer weights. Weight paint. Transfer weights. Ooh. Near space interpolated and by name. And then, boom, it's rigged. And then you can separate it. And put it under its own skeleton. Uh, same thing, make sure that it is X rotation 90, scales all 1. You can do that by applying all transforms, setting this to negative 90, applying all transforms, and doing 90. And when you export, it is 0 0.01 and tangent space checked. And then when you're in Frost Meshy, you've got this selected. You click this button, cape, and then we'll just select that. And then same as we did in the importing tutorial, just kind of set up your... A uh, little of distances, how you want them. And then you hit convert. And importing, you only need to import the these files. There's not going to give you any chunk files to change. So you just import. Uh, let's see. Cape mesh, cloth wrapping assets, the blocks, and the EA cloth. And there we go, there's the cape in the game, you just need to apply the textures, just like that.
All right, and the last thing is the jetpack effects that I did for this character. Uh, I kind of skipped over in the tutorial because it's uh, mostly relevant for most characters, but I'll go ahead and mention it here real quick. Uh, so to do the effects, all I did was go into the components of the effects file for the jetpack, and I messed with these transform values. Um, my character's effects are just on his feet. I just lowered the things to his feet because he has rocket boots. His uh, jetpack itself doesn't actually emit flame in the game. Or his backpack thing doesn't emit flame, so it just goes to his feet. And so I can just live with that. Um, it's not, it doesn't line up perfectly, but some things in, sometimes in mods for this game, things just are impossible. Like lining up that effects to his feet. Um, so I can live with this. And you just play with these values. For me, it was just lowering this 0.8, and I did that for every single component of this effects. And then I also had to change this prefab. Now, be very careful when you mess with this, because usually it is just for like gameplay changes. But in this case, it also needed to affect the effects. And there are a few objects here that you can see affect effects which in my case are 125 and 126, Entity Transform, Entity Data. And then I just affected, I believe it was these numbers, possibly? Yeah, and I said it's a negative one, and that changes the effects when he's falling down. Like when Boba Fett flies all the way up, and then you let go, and then he starts flying down, that is the little effects that will now be at his feet instead of back... Uh, up by where his jetpack usually is. And that's that. I'm going to jump into the game now. We're going to take a once over of this entire mod uh, and make sure that it's ready to go. So here we are in Battlefront 2, ready to play a game. You can see pretty much everything's here the text edits, the start cards, the portrait, the, the gun, the character. Ooh, I'm excited. Let's go. Very nice. Alright. So Easy I fixed. jobs bore me. Ooh. Ooh, slide interrupted me. Very nice. <laughs> but yeah, so now we're just gonna kind of run around and see if anything looks whack or weird that we need to change. Yeah, I got it. I like this a lot. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. Never met anybody who's blaster proof. Rigging looks really good. I'm not noticing any issues anymore. Yeah, the only weird thing about this is kind of the rocket boots, but if you're not paying attention, <laughs> can't even tell. That's right. Uh, the gun sound has not been changed. I maybe should uh, maybe should do that uh, at some point, and that would just be simply just finding the gun sound in the game files and then just importing another sound over it. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much that. Keep it up. I might do that. I might just leave it like this. I don't know. Payment involved. I'm interested. I'll be in touch. Dangerous jobs are my specialty. And there we go. 
Ooh. Just like that, we are... I think we're good. Mod's pretty much done. Thank you all so much for watching this tutorial series. I hope that you finally have your character in Star Wars Guild of Public and you are just as excited about having your character as I am as about having my character right here. So, yeah. I will see you in future tutorials, possibly. Don't know if I'll ever make another tutorial. Uh, who knows? But this series is done, and that is that. So, go have fun.